How are you feeling? You got rigs here. Today we're making some more repros. This is a little something called the U in ROM. Maybe you've run across these undoing some boards and you're like, U in ROM? That's kind of weird. What can I do? What can I make? Well, let me show you how to make one right now. is a little different from other boards because there's one extra step in making UN ROM repros that you don't have to do on any of the other Nintendo repros. But there's one that you have to do on some UN ROM boards. And I'll tell you why and I'll show you why coming up. So there are two different board types. You have this one, which is a UN ROM, says so up there. And then this guy right here is the game. It only requires one chip, only one EEPROM for this thing. So that's gonna make it really easy for us. Um, and like in ROM and C in ROM games, it does have the mirroring, whether it be horizontal or vertical. So you gotta watch out for that. This chip stays in place. That's not going anywhere. Just the one chip right there for you in ROM. The other you in ROM looks like this guy. It's kind of weird with this chip going straight up, but this is actually a lot easier to make than this one over here. And I'll show you why in a second. Um, but pretty cool. Instead of it going that way, it's going this way and it works just as well. The reason it's a little bit different is this one is a 23 pin and you use a 32 pin EEPROM, which means it sticks out a little bit farther, but you got a, uh, you got a resistor right there. So the one extra step you have to do on this kind of board is you have to unsolder the resistor and solder it back in place in the back. And it's not that hard, really. You just unsolder it and make sure you, you know, same straight upside up make sure it goes in the same way and everything. And it'll work just fine, it really will. But with this guy, you don't have to worry about it. So, uh, between the two, oh, also with this one, because it sticks out a little bit more, it's harder to get back into the Nintendo shape, the, the case for the whole thing. So, makes it a little bit harder. This game actually here, came from this guy here. It'll be my pleasure destroying this game. You know what I mean? First thing as always, you gotta remove the chip. Ah, come on, there's always that one that doesn't wanna come out, right? I look across the landscape and I see some little mounds of solder that didn't quite get sucked up. So on this side now, I'm going to go ahead and touch these out here. That ground is always a hard one. Uh, I got that one that's not one to come up, so I'm going to have to put more solder in it just so I can plug up the or unclog the whole thing. I probably shouldn't use the tip of my soldering gun as a soldering iron, but it, unfortunately it works too easily. There we go. Eudemus. Now that's taken care of, again, this guy, the resistor, we gotta take this out and then just swap it from front to back. It'll still work just as good. But we have to do this because the EEPROM is gonna be so long that it is now in the way. These things are pretty fragile, so you don't wanna chug on it or take it out or, you know, really yank on it or anything like that. But you do wanna keep in mind which side was up, face up. And we're just gonna take it like that. Pop it in that side, kind of give it the old clamp there. The clamps! All right. And now we'll solder that in place on this side too. You know what, for the sake of demonstration, I am gonna go ahead and make something out of this game too. And sometimes you'll see these referred to as Konami boards because they're from Konami games. This one actually came out of a silent scope. Is the solder thing is so awesome. They're like the what you see on Super Nintendo and Genesis games. Um, you shouldn't have any problem unsoldering these. These are great. Solder these ones so clean. You gotta just pick it up just like that, not crazy. Wish all games were that easy. All right, and again, the resistor is right there. It's out of the way, don't even need to worry about it. For this demonstration, we are using the M27C2001, which is hard to see on that thing. It's kind of faded a little bit. And the closer I get, the blurrier it gets. Yeah, you'll just have to take my word for it. M27C2001, or sometimes called the 020. Um, it's already situated. I'm gonna put Labyrinth on this one. You and Rom, that has some games, which isn't bad. You can look at that, the uh, the Nest database, which is linked below as well for all the UN ROM games. But you have to consider too that any of the hacks or most of the hacks will also work. So all of the great Castlevania hacks that are out there, all the Mega Man hacks that are out there. Uh, but for this one, we'll do Labyrinth and we'll do, um, we'll, we'll, do a, a, we'll do a fun hack and I'll surprise you with the hack uh, after the game is built. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and write our ROM. All right. Um, I am using, I get questions about that. I'm using the top 3000. This has a big enough thing for uh, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Genesis games too, but you can use any EEPROM writer that you want, as long as it works. Once you have your EEPROMs programmed with the UN ROM, you wanna bend up pins one and two, 24, 
So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, that one right there. And then you want to bend up 10, 31. And you may as well bend up 32 as well because it's not going to fit on the board without it. So go ahead and bend up 32. You're not going to need it. However, you are going to need pin 32 to connect pin 32 to pin 30. And we'll go over the wiring here in a second. So there you go. Since I'm already in the pin bending mood. Ah, I forgot to straighten them out. I was even telling myself this time. I was like, I'm going to straighten them out this time. I'm going to remember. Totally didn't. This is going to help them put them in the board that much easier. Now on you and ROMs, the only hole you need to solder is hole 22. I know we bent up pin 24, but because this is 28 pins compared to the 32 pins of an EEPROM here, um, hole 22 is where pin 24 would be, if that makes sense. So find hole 22. I do it basically by saying 17, it's not 17, but still 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, because that's where that's going to go. We'll start with that wire right there. All right. Just like such. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and solder that resistor into place too. Resistor? Capacitor? I guess this is a resistor. I'll be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure what it does. I think it just helps regulate power, maybe? On the other hand, I don't care what it does, so long as it works. I like having the magical element to it. <laughs> Alright, so now again, this thing's going to be too long. This thing's going to be quite too long to fit on there, however... When it does fit, it'll make sense. Beautimus. Check it out. Solder these pins in place in the meantime. Then with the one wire that's in the hole, you want to wire that to pin two. Probably not standard procedure, but I'm going to put a little bit of solder on pin two. And that way I can just put that right there. The solder melts. I kind of like put the pin on there. It takes about two seconds for it to harden. And there you go. Pin two wraps around a hole 22 or 24, you know, so it's where that would be. You need to do the grounding idea. So pin 24, where pin 16 kind of would be, you know what I mean? Like on the other games that we do. That's kind of standard for all Nintendo games that we re make repros of. Just about all of them anyway. As you see, my wires are really long. Um, I pre-cut these a while ago. You can make them as long or as short as you want, really. Um, I would recommend probably not having them this long. I like doing the wraparound idea. Um, however, I mean, you see people who are just like super tight with them and they go around all the EEPROMs and all the other RAMs and stuff. And I might mean, don't have little clippers to make that happen. So I just like doing it this way. All right, it's almost done. Those are the only two wires that you need. But then you need to bridge pin 30 to pin 32. You can put a wire between the two. I've seen people like bend this into pin 30 and then solder it that way. And I've never actually tried that. So let's try it today just to see if it works. I usually just put a wire between the two because that's easiest for me. 32, oh, 32, right? I'm just gonna bend it. I don't wanna break it, that's my thing. I'm gonna put a dab of solder right between the two and see what happens. This actually might be all right. Saves me some wire if it works. There we go, got it. All right, um, before I test this, let's make the other one now. So now with this one, same idea, except for instead of the EEPROM going, oh, wait a minute. Instead of the EEPROM going that way, it's gonna go this way, right in front like that. Need to put some wire on hole 22, which would be 24. And if it starts up, it starts up, up at one, all the way down to where 16 would be, 17, and then up that way. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 is where that one would go. Sometimes when you force it, um, then the pin will bend the wrong direction. <laughs> you don't want that. Very cool. All right, solder these bad boys in place. I love the solder pads on these Konami UN ROM boards. But not all Konami games have this. Like I know Double Dragon, Double Dragon, Double Dribble, doesn't, I don't believe, uh, but I know Silent Service does, and I know a few others do too. If it's easier for you, you can actually hold it like this, or, you know, look at it that way too. And sometimes I kind of do, because like I, that's what I'm used to seeing as EEPROMs. So, hold 22 to pin 2 right there, right on the thing. You already have the solder on there, just do that. And just make sure that the wire's not touching the other, the other uh, things. Cool. 
Um, and then for this one, I am going to go ahead and use a wire. All right, so I'm actually going to place a wire just because I can from pin 32 to pin 30. So this is kind of a messy job, but you know what? If it works, you can't see it unless you're using like a transparent cart. You know, who cares? So that's kind of like what I got going on there. Kind of, <laughs> it's like a subway system. All things are going around, but I got the diagram in the description anyway on what to put where and how to put it. So let's test them out. Hopefully they work. All right, I just put it straight in there. Just get you a shot here. This one's going to be the surprise. Check it out. Ta-da! Mega Man in the Mushroom Kingdom. What? All right, Subcon Desert Classic. Well, let's check out uh, let's check out Classic. See what happens here. All right. So it's kind of cool. There's a lot of great hacks for. Um, oh my goodness! What is this? Does this look familiar to you? <laughs> it's still Mega Man. Um, you know, <laughs> but it looks like this. Oh geez, isn't that funny? All right, so that's that one. Yeah, there's some cool Mega Man hacks. There's some great uh, Castlevania hacks as well. There's even a hack of DuckTales 2. DuckTales 2 is a UN ROM game, you know. Uh, there's a great hack of DuckTales 2 making it a two-player game where the second player is Darkwing Duck. And here you have it. Two UN ROM games that we made tonight. Pretty cool. Two different styles, uh, both are you and rom games doesn't matter what they look like on the outside but man if they work good enough um again not a whole lot of you and rom games that are out there maybe look around test out some of the roms and if one of them's cool enough why not pop it on a board and you know make a repro out of it again labyrinth it's a fun idea you know the fact that we could have had a labyrinth here one of my favorite movies of all time um but to me really the charm of the you and rom are all the great hacks that are out there check out the castlevania hacks again the Mega Man hacks some great ideas for you in ROM games. Um, it's a little unique, especially with that idea here too. And also this game, once it's made like this, because this is sticking out just a little bit, not much, um, it's hard to put back into a Nintendo shell, but it does fit, it does fit. Don't force it, but apply great pressure, but don't force it. <laughs> so, a couple of you in ROM games. Uh, I, I thank you for watching. A big shout out to all my Patreons. If it wasn't for you, this wouldn't have happened. I actually used Patreon money to buy some new EEPROMs uh, to do this video. And I still have the uh, TL ROM video uh, coming up here pretty soon, which also includes TS ROM and TK ROM. Um, those are like the really, really good uh, Nintendo games you can make, including like Splatterhouse, including uh, a TK ROM would be uh, Mother or Earth, you know, Earthbound Zero, sometimes they call it. So uh, that'll, that'll be coming up here in a future episode too. So thanks for watching. I thank you for subscribing. We got more uh, more videos on the way, more tutorials, more hacks. And, um, you know, pretty cool, man. Till next time, thanks for watching. We'll see ya.